Today, what to do if you sleep through an exam, we show off a student group and a chance for you to win some cash. I'm Carolina Basilica. And I'm William Jordan. Wait, wait. Hold up. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear Carolina. Happy birthday to you. And welcome to the Yamsu News Desk. realizing you've slept through an exam or misread the time. So if you do, contact your faculty advisor because there's something you might not know. Every undergraduate student at the University of Manitoba is allowed one misread excuse in their academic career. So contact your faculty advisor after your horrible mistake, beg for forgiveness, and remember, you only get one misread excuse. So don't waste it. Now admittedly, this is a slow news day. So we're digging up some old footage that just kept being pushed back and back until, frankly, it wasn't relevant anymore. But, slow news day, so we're digging it out now. Here's a blast from the past. Here's Mark Neufeld with Campus Greens. Dateline 2010, Mark Neufeld with the student group Campus Green! So we're standing outside the NPR. I'm talking with Sean Gertzen about the uh, activities going on behind us. Uh, maybe you could tell me a little bit about what's going on today. Yeah, so uh, I'm with the Campus Greens here, and uh, what we're doing is showing what Parliament looks like right now, what it's looked like for the past two months, because in late December, while everyone was, you know, having their Christmas break, um, Harper prorogued the government, which means that um, no one sits in Parliament until it's over, and so it was for two months. Um, all bills that were going through the Senate or House of Commons are trashed, um, and all committees that were meeting over various issues are trashed as well. This room, if you look around, you've probably filmed, is set up to look like, seat by seat actually, the layout of the Parliament, the House of Commons of Canada. And it has been prorogued twice in the last 14 months, including currently, I think until tomorrow. I think the last day of the prorogation is today. And what it means is um, the, the members of Parliament who were elected by the commoners of Canada, which is us, the voting citizens of Canada, um, are not able to debate important contentious issues, whether it be economics, whether it be the Afghan detain detainee crisis that was going on, but whether the government knew or not. None of it can happen. And what would the goal be in telling people what's going on then here? We're just trying to let people know that this actually happened. I think a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of political apathy, especially with youth. And some, a lot of people don't even know that this happened. So we're explaining that to people. Um, to people that know about it, we're explaining what our stance is on it um, and just trying to get people more politically involved. I feel like when people talk about the political stuff that's happening in the city, a lot of the time the language gets elevated to a place where myself or other common individuals maybe aren't even getting the issue. If you could just break it down to its finest points about what the problem is and what you're trying to talk about, what would you say that is? Right, so with the prorogue, um, Mr. Harper, our Prime Minister, um, what a prorogue, he, he prorogued Parliament and what that means is that no, none of our representatives federally are sitting in the House of Commons so basically uh, Parliament is not working for us right now, our representatives aren't working for us um, for two months. So basically it's like a paid vacation for them and they already had their vacation in December. Uh, no one else, we're not taking this time off, right? We're still at school, we're still working, so we think they should be working too. In terms of legal lines, is anybody breaking any laws? With uh, Harper proroguing the government? Sure. Um, no, he's technically allowed to do it, um, and it has happened in the past, but uh, we really feel like this is the second time in, I think, two years, and it's just not for any constructive reason. It's just uh, all background strategy, and we're not impressed at all. So, 
You'll see us on campus. We are very, it's our first full year as a, as, a, as a member group of the Student Union and we are active and we'll be holding more events. There's an event tomorrow, it's our monthly meeting. And I mean, obviously things trail off after April, but we're building like a network of progressive researchers, students, professors, anyone who wants to start to develop another form of policy, another form of politics that includes people, that educates people, that has us thinking more cooperatively, you know. We're not just out here to skewer conservatives or the prime minister, but we know he's a very unpopular prime minister. And if we can get people aware of the way he's treating our democracy, that's like a first step into maybe a longer discussion. And that's what today is. It's an artistic, creative first step into a longer discussion. Now, admittedly, this is kind of useless, what with uh, Parliament being back in action, but nonetheless, if there are any student groups with events you want us to cover, please email us at umsuvision1 at umsu.ca. And finally, for students graduating this year who would like a little bit of extra spending money for that summer vacation, UMSU has a variety of scholarships available on their website, categories including student government, extracurricular activities, and more. If one of the scholarships applies to you, let UMSU know or nominate a friend, and when they win, take half. Anything is possible. So, how come I wasn't invited to your birthday party? What do you mean? I totally invited you. Are you sure? I didn't get my invitation. Oh, well, of course you can come. Awesome. I don't have to get you a gift or anything, do I? <laughs> Once again, for the Amsu News Desk, I'm Carolina Basilica. And I'm William Jordan. We'll see you next week.